Hi everybody, welcome to Katie in the Morning. I'm Katie Page, Director of Member Relations at the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. I came across an interesting question on social media over the weekend, and I don't think it pertains directly to certified nursing assistants, but it could be in any industry or any career at all. The question was, um, what can I do to gain the respect of my supervisors? So I brought three easy steps for almost anybody to follow in order to gain the respect of your supervisors within the first 90 days of employment. Uh, the first one is very, very simple. Uh, on the first day that you are there at the job doing orientation is a day that you take in the most information. So bring your A-game from day number one. Um, pay attention to what's being taught to you, um, how they're teaching it, where you can find things, that sort of thing. Ask questions. Um, People aren't going to understand that you're understanding everything that they're telling you unless you ask questions or repeat it back to them. And then show up on time, if not five to ten minutes early. Uh, that is probably the number one way to ruin your reputation, especially in skilled nursing, is if you show up late within your first week of employment. Um, that first impressions are very, very lasting impressions. And it's going to kind of be hard to regain that traction if you're running late. Um, back to the asking questions thing, um, if there's things that you're unsure about that they're trying to teach you or if you've seen it done a different way and you're not exactly sure why they're doing it that way rather than the other way, ask them. Um, kind of dig in there, get your hands dirty, not literally because you're going to want to wear gloves most of the time that you're there, um, but I mean really get your teeth in there and get a good grip on what it is that they're expecting of you and what your job description is. It can change from facility to facility depending on policies and procedures and what the description of a CNA is in that building. There could be um, several different CNA positions within that building. You could have uh, the certified nursing assistant, you could do a certified preceptor, you could do lead CNAs. All of those have very different job descriptions depending on the facility that you're in. So the first thing that you're going to do, going to want to do in even in the interview process, is ask questions and understand fully what it is they're expecting of you in the 8, 12, 16 hours that you're there a day. Uh, step number two is a very, very easy one as well. Um, step number two is be the solution, not the problem. Um, there's d different ways to present your ideas, but always do it in a positive way. If you have an idea of how to make something better within the facility, especially in those first 90 days, it's going to show your supervisor that you're taking an interest in what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and the skills and knowledge that you're learning along the way. Um, one of the big recommendations that I can give you is if you have an idea, DONs, administrators, staff development coordinators, um, they're all very, very busy and they have a tight schedule. So if you have an idea that you want to present to one of them, um, just kind of pop by their office one day and say, hey, I have something I'd like to talk to you about. Um, could I schedule uh, time to sit down and talk to you? That way they make sure that they're giving you enough time to explain what it is that you're wanting to kind of uh, initiate and explain in full, but at the same time, you're not putting that pressure on them, like kind of like dropping bombs on them randomly throughout their week. Um, when you present an idea, make sure that you do research. You're not just like pulling it out of the air and presenting it to them on spur of the moment. Um, do some research. Uh, you can even create a PowerPoint slide to that way you're not forgetting anything that you're wanting to include and explain to them how it directly relates to the problem um, or the thing that you're wanting to improve in itself. Uh, we're going to take a short break and then after that we will come back with step number three. Welcome back to Katie in the Morning. Today we're talking about three easy steps that you can implement anywhere, not just in the skilled nursing um, career or industry, but you could even do these at McDonald's or Hardee's or wherever it is that you're trying to impress your supervisors within the first 90 days. 
Uh, we kind of skimmed through step one and step two. Now we're going to come to step three, which is do what you were hired to do and then some. Um, ex exceed the expectations in the time that you are there and be positive and, and an accountable person. Uh, one of the things that supervisors look for in new employees is that ability to be accountable and take responsibility for things that you've done. Um, one of the best compliments you could ever, ever get is if a supervisor comes to you and says, hey, Mrs. Smith just said, you know, I really appreciate that new hire. She's amazing or he's doing a great job. Uh, and the only way to do that is to, like I said, do what you were hired to do and then some. So if a resident's sitting there, if they're complaining of a backache, if they're, you know, it's coming up on the anniversary of their daughter's death or something like that, take that extra time to sit down with them and show them that you want to connect with them as a person. Show them that you care about them. Show them that it does take a special person to do our job very well. Uh, like I've told you guys in Katie in the morning and days gone by that anybody can be a CNA, but it takes a special person to be a great CNA. And if you want to prove that in the first 90 days of employment, you'll just follow those three easy steps. Another thing that I'd um, like to kind of point out is, as far as the accountability part goes is if you're doing a call off. Um, if there's something that's come up and you're not able to make it to work or if you're going in two or three hours late, take care of that before you call a facility. The Whoever the scheduling person is in that building is going to greatly, greatly appreciate it if you call up and say, hey, Sheila, um, I have a flat tire. I'm not going to be able to make it there in time, but I've already called Michelle and she's going to cover my shift until I get there. Or if you call in and say, call in, call off. It's called different things in different parts of the nation, I've come to notice. But that's beside the point. Uh, so if you're going to call off and say your daughter has pneumonia or has the flu, it's flu season still, and you have a replacement before you even call that facility and you know say, hey, uh, Sheila, I'm not going to be able to come in. My daughter's got 104 temperature. I have to take her into the clinic. But I've already called David and he's going to cover my whole shift. That is stuff that they're greatly, greatly going to appreciate and they're going to see that you're taking the initiative to fit into that facility and be a better part of that facility uh, than as to if you just call in and let them handle it from there. Um, the third thing, or the third part of the third step is coming in just with that positive energy and that smile. Um, it's one thing to be a part of a team and it's another thing to be an actively engaged, positive part of that team. Uh, if there, and there's some, a couple comments on this post that said, um, people have noticed that the troublemakers get more attention than the people that are there doing their job the way they're supposed to be doing it. Well, of course they are, but that is not uh, a positive thing that the DON, the, the administrators, when it comes to those time to do those evaluations for those raises and you get the evaluations, whether it's the nurses doing it for you, whether it's your coworkers doing it on you, uh, whether it's a DON doing it about you, um, when they go through and there's somebody that you don't ha that they don't have to constantly go to and constantly correct and constantly um, do plans of corrective action for, you're going to get a better review period. Um, besides the fact that if you're doing all these things and implementing all these things, it's going to make it a better environment for the residents that we've taken an oath to take care of. Um, so that's just kind of a rundown on three things that you can do to make to gain the respect of your supervisors within the first 90 days of employment. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you right back here tomorrow for Katie in the morning.